Hi, everyone. Good evening. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you for those responses. Okay, we will now begin the webinar. Hi everyone, good evening. Good evening everyone. Okay, so let's start this session. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone for attending our live webinar on Healthcare Assistance Program to Canada for tonight. Um, later on, we will also have Ms. Jenica Lisserio. She is the Director for International Admission of Stanford College, of course, our partner school for Healthcare Assistance Program to Canada. Okay, so to begin with, let me introduce myself first. So my name is Rose Garcia, and I am the Client Acquisition Manager of Roman and Associates Immigration Services. So just friendly, uh, just some friendly reminders to everybody. Um, as we proceed with the discussion, I will be putting everyone in mute. And if you have questions or clarifications, you may temporarily uh, post them in our chat box, then we'll attend to them one by one as we finish both discussions. So uh, on the side of Roman and Associates Immigration Services, I will be discussing with you the immigration process on how you can successfully get your or apply for a student visa. And later on, Ms. Jenica Lesario, she will be discussing with us the whole program details of Healthcare Assistant Program to Canada. Okay, so please settle down. So we will now begin with our discussion. Okay, so to begin with, let me introduce to you our company. Uh, we are Roman and Associates Immigration Services Limited. Of course, we are a registered Canadian immigration firm in British Columbia, Canada. And you can also check that one in Canada Business Registry. Okay, so where are we located? We have our two offices, the one in, our, of course, our office in Canada is in 6057 Dumont Road, Nanaimo, British Columbia. And our head office in the Philippines is in President J.P. Laurel Highway, Lipa City, Batangas. By the way, we also have our extension office in Kalumpit, Bulacan. So for those clients or students coming from North or NCR, we are very pleased to assist you and um, you know see you in our Kalumpit. Bulacan office. Just give us, you know, a message or send us a message or a chat us with our pages so we can schedule your visit in our office. Okay. Uh, what makes us different with other uh, organization offering the same services is that we are Roman Canadian Immigration Services. We we have our own licensed immigration consultant. Um, to introduce to you our licensed immigration consultant, he is none other than Mr. Israel Roman with license number R524540. So like what I've said, of course, he's a licensed Canadian immigration consultant who registered with the Immigration Consultant of Canada Regulatory Council. He is also an active registered nurse in Canada and presently working as nurse manager in British Columbia. He used also to work as nursing professor in, uh, Philipp in the Philippines way back in uh, 2008 when he decided to you know, migrate in Canada and work there as active nurse in Canada. So there you go. That's our licensed immigration consultant, Mr. Israel Roman. Okay, as we continue with our discussion, for this one, our aim is to answer the question flashed on your screen. This is how you will be able to work as healthcare assistant for as sorry as healthcare assistant in Canada. <clears throat> These are the regular steps on how you can work as healthcare assistant in Canada. First, you have to be re uh, registered with healthcare health worker registry 
also in busy care aid and community health worker registry. But the major requirement is that you must reside in British Columbia. So what's in it for you if you are not residing in Canada? For internationally educated healthcare professionals or graduates of healthcare assistant programs outside Canada, for you to be able to work as healthcare assistant, you simply need to apply for study permit and take the healthcare assistant program. Okay, how are you going to do that one? You just simply need to talk to Romanian Associates Immigration Services, of course, our partner school for that specific course, Sandberg College, and that will definitely give you the answer to your question on how you will be able to work as healthcare assistant in Canada. Okay, for those applicants or students who successfully finished the healthcare assistant program, these are the benefits or uh, the privileges that awaits you after finishing the course. Of course, after finishing or successfully uh, finishing the program, you can now apply for work permit. Also, after two years of working, you can already apply for permanent residency visa. And should you want to continue your study program, you may either take postgraduate diploma in Canadian nursing or early childhood education. Okay. So flash on your screen, this is just an example on how you will be able to check if there are really available jobs for you in Canada after finishing the healthcare assistant course or program. So you should really need to go to the site of healthcare aid in British Columbia. Then should you want to check the available jobs, this will give you this specific field. Given this example, let's say for example, you have to, you want to take a look on the available jobs per location. For British Columbia, there are like 117 jobs available for you. So it is really a clear manifestation that healthcare assistance is really an in-demand job in Canada. Not only that, of course, if you really want to choose a specific career or profession you want to pursue, we also consider, of course, how much you will be earning out of those career or profession that you have chosen. So for this one, <clears throat> since you are already on the side of healthcare aid in British Columbia, before, should you want to check for the jobs, you simply need to click the jobs. And for this one, since we are checking on the prevailing wages, you simply need to click the wages portion. And this will give you the specific view. For this one, it is, <clears throat> categorize into community or area. So let's say, for example, again, should you want to check those uh, prevailing wages in British Columbia, this will give you the, uh, this will give you the, you know, the specific uh, figures for that one. So we have three categories for wages. Of course, we have low, median, and high. For British Columbia, the low, um, the low salary wage per hour is already in 18 Canadian dollar per hour. For that of median, it is already 22 Canadian uh, uh, dollars per hour. And uh, under high category, it is already 25 Canadian dollars per hour. So should you want to check along with the other communities or area, you may just choose from the options, then you check what is the prevailing wages under low, median, and high category. Okay. So whenever we choose a specific career or profession, um, we also consider this question, is this specific job still in demand for the next three years? So what's good about Canada, they give or provide us this specific report or job prospect by provinces and territory. So for the healthcare aid in Canada, Given the location, for example, in Alberta, British Columbia, Manitoba, and the rest of the places there, this will give you the job prospects for the next three years. So take a look at the British Columbia. The job prospects for the next three years is under good category. That means healthcare aid or healthcare assistant, a profession in Canada, still in demand for the next three years. So that's another 
you know, um, security on your side should you really want to pursue in finishing or taking the course healthcare assistant program to Canada. Okay, so let's try to consider this one. So given that you know already the early rate for healthcare assistant in Canada, let's say for example for this one, salary range or early rate is 25.83 Canadian dollars per hour. Let's try to compute and convert those figures into Philippine peso. Okay, so sample wage computation for healthcare assistant. Given that your early rate is 25.83 per hour, and of course you are asked to work 40 hours per week, that will give you 1,033.20 Canadian dollars in just one week. How about if we are to compute your salary for the whole month? You will be earning 4,132.80 Canadian dollars in just one month. Okay, sounds exciting, right? So how about if you are to compute now your annual income? Given that we have 52 weeks per year, that will give you 53,726.40. Can you imagine how much this um, in Philippine peso? Okay, let's try to consider the conversion rate of Canadian dollar to Philippine peso, as of today, it's 41 pesos per Canadian dollar. Okay, so by just working one whole year as healthcare assistant in Canada, you will now have the chance to earn 2,202,782.40 pesos. Imagine, by just earning 12 months of as a healthcare assistant, in Canada, you will be earning millions in Canada. Unlike here in the Philippines, we cannot, you know, deny the fact that you just you you still need to, you know, to spare half of your life working before you get this specific amount. Imagine how good or you know how interesting the healthcare assistant program and how important that you successfully finish the healthcare assistant program to Canada. Okay, now that we already know our, <clears throat> I was able to, pre to present to you the, <clears throat> the computation of healthcare assistant in Canada. Let's try to consider also the early rate for in-home caregiver, okay? So this is just an example on how we can check the early rate for in-home caregiver in Canada. Again, you simply need to go to home health care worker in Canada and go to wages field. Then this will give you, of course, uh, this category, of course, the community, the area, then the low, median, and high wages categories. So for Canada, let's try to consider the median wage, which is 16.85, and try to compute again uh, the equivalent earnings into Philippine peso. Okay. So given that you, your, your early rate is 16.85 Canadian dollars per hour, again, you're asked to work 40 hours per week, that will give you 675 Canadian dollars per week. And if you are to consider four weeks in a month, that will give you 2,696 Canadian dollars in a month. And if we are to consider working for the whole year, which is, of course, consists of 52 weeks, that will give you 35,048 Canadian dollars. Again, can you imagine how much it's equivalent if we are to compute that one or convert that one into Philippine peso? Given again that your conversion rate is 41 pesos per Canadian dollar, that is as of today, June 10, uh, 2022, here in the Philippines. So this will give you 1,436,968. Again, the figure is, you know, overwhelming and the, probably this will give you more interest of, uh, you know, um, making sure that you really enroll uh, under healthcare assistant program in Canada. Okay, so there you go. So upon hearing how good the benefit or the advantages of, you know, 
working as healthcare assistant program in Canada, the wages, the salary, and the job security that awaits you for the next three years. Let us now consider what are the advantages in joining with us? What are the advantages in availing our services in Roman and Associates Immigration Services? Of course, we are partnered with a college that delivers exceptional education, of course, um, no other than Stanford College. We also have reasonable administration fee. We also have reasonable retainers fee, of course, <clears throat> uh, with the presence of our licensed immigration consultant. And <clears throat> you'll have your job security after successfully finishing the healthcare assistant program. Okay, so again, if you are a healthcare, or if you were, if you are a student who successfully finished the course, or should you want to enroll in a specific healthcare assistant program to Canada, you simply need to talk to Roman and Associates Immigration Services and enroll under Stanford College, the healthcare assistant program. This will definitely give you the assurance of migrating to Canada and taking the healthcare assistant program and definitely land into a job that will definitely give your family a better future. So what is the next step after that? You simply need to send your detailed resume for eligibility check to our email address, which is assessment at romancecis. That's a, for easy identification of your application. You simply need to use the subject line assessment for HCA at Stenberg College. And we will be pleased to you know, assist and get in touch with you as we receive your application. Again, this uh, assessment is for free. So right after this uh, webinar, I want to I want everybody to you know to start sending your resume so we can check your eligibility to apply for healthcare assistant program to Canada. Okay, so that's all from me. And I may now turn you over to the very pretty Jenica Lissery of Stanford College as she discussed with us the complete program details of healthcare assistant program to Canada. Okay, so stay relaxed and just enjoy the session. Later on, we'll, we'll have our Q&A for all the questions and clarifications that you have as you, you know, listen and hear from us the program uh, details and the processes for uh, securing your necessary visa to Canada. Okay, so thank you so much, guys. I'll see you again later, and I'll give the floor now to Ms. Chen. Hello everyone, good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes, good evening. Hey, there you go, good evening. Thank you very much for the introduction. Okay, hello. Yes, I can see a lot of attendees for tonight. I'm very happy. Thank you for joining tonight's um, webinar. My name is Jenica Lucerio and I will be discussing the program um, Healthcare Assistant here um, at Stanford College. So hello, may mga naga hello sa atin sa chat box. Hello everyone. So I'm gonna share um, my screen with you. Um, please bear with me while I try to do that. <laughs> okay, and the first thing that I'm gonna show you is a video, um, introductory video of Stanford College. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly stop my video for a while and I'll show you the introductory video.
Okay, there you have it. That's Denver College. So just to formally introduce myself again, my name is Jenica. I'm the Director of International Admissions and Recruitment for Southeast Asia and the Middle East. And I'm based here in the Philippines. I'm working from home. So I'm apologizing for any background noise we may have tonight. Okay. Um, here in the Philippines, I also have, um, I'm working together with Alexa Laxa. She's our international education advisor. So what we basically do is if there are any applications um, coming from the Philippines, um, Southeast Asia or the Middle East, um, even if you submit it to our um, campus in uh, British Columbia, they will still go through to us, okay? So we would be your contact person together with Romanian Associates team. So I'm going to talk to you about a, a, bit, a brief background of the institution, okay? So with um, Stanford College, we are a private, okay? Private, post-secondary college. And we were founded back in 1990 by Mary Jane Stanford. So originally, okay, the, the initial programs that we were offering are in the health sector. So that's our specialty, okay? The programs in health. So we're a well-established medical college. Now, because of the success of our graduates, they're really sought after by employers and we were able to um, establish really good employer partnerships and industry partnerships. We were able to expand into other um, industries such as education, human services, and business. Now, our campus location, as I've mentioned, is in British Columbia in Surrey. So if you're not aware yet, Surrey is actually a suburb of Vancouver. It's the second largest city in British Columbia. Um, and the good thing about living in Surrey is that, um, you know, how Vancouver has a reputation of um, having a high living cost, right? Um, it's actually just um, almost the same with other major cities. But if you live in Surrey, you, are, you actually have about 21% lower cost of living. Um, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that we have a strong employer and industry relationship. So this is something that I'll be discussing more later on. Now, once you become part of Stanford College, we make sure that you're successful, okay? We're really hands-on when it comes to our services and support. And I guess this is what sets us apart from other institutions. Um, we know our students, we know their history, we can, you know, although, although there's a lot of other domestic students, about 90% of our student body is international. Oh, I mean domestic, there's 10% international. Um, it's a combination of different races and cultures, right? And most of our international students, they're more of a referral because probably the student has enjoyed their time with us, so they normally refer us. If you haven't heard of Stanford College, that is because we haven't been really active in the international um, promotions. Um, I guess we started 2019 and then the pandemic hit, right? So anyway, the point there is we've been in the education industry for over 30 years now. We've established ourselves and we have a great support system for our international students. So some of that would be your student services, academic support, accommodation support, career services, co-op practicum, job placement support, and immigration consultation support. So I just want to highlight a few of these things. Number one would be the academic support. So being an international student, we are fully aware, okay, that some of you might have um, double intentions, right? You want to stay, um, you are allowed to work part-time, but because you are under, under a student visa, you need to take care of that visa as well. So we want to make sure that you pass your subjects, right? What you can expect at Stanberg is that you'll have small class sizes. Um, instructors are really approachable. You can schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. We have free English um, classes for you if you want to improve your English communication skills. We can appoint a life coach for you, um, which we found very helpful with students. Um, as a feedback, they've, they've told us that because when, they, when you arrive and you have to adjust to the new environment, to the new culture, right? And you're studying and you're working at the same time, it might get challenging for you. And a life coach has 
helped our students guide them um, with adapting to their new environment and just balancing the student life and the work life. So that's what you can expect when it comes to the academics. You, have, you will have your student success coordinators who you can approach uh, for any service that you may request for. Next is the career services. Another very important thing is that when you arrive, okay, um, there will be an orientation. And during that orientation, you will meet our academic support. You'll meet the career services. And normally what they do is they will um, assist you with your resumes, okay, because to make sure that they're on a Canadian standard, right? Um, and if you need some assistance with interviews, okay, they would be the go-to, the career services. So they can help you with your part-time work. And they normally assist during the, you know, the graduation of students. Our programs will have co-op in them. So co-op means cooperative work experience. Here in the Philippines, it's more commonly known as internship or OJT, right? So the co-ops that we have, the good thing about it is that you don't have to look for your own. Because like, for example, in a public institution, you'll have to look for your own co-op employer and have them sign up as your co-op employer. With us, you don't need to do that because we have a job placement for our co-ops. So we have a lot of employer partners where our students get placed for their co-op. Now, another good thing is that it, um, it's a paid co-op. So basically what you do is you practice what you've learned um, for and you you work there in the in the um, employer for 20 hours per week okay that is the co-op hours and then you still have your student permit work hours right of another 20 hours per week so in total during your co-op you can be working up to 40 hours per week and of course we only partner with legitimate agencies such as roman and associates so let's talk about the healthcare assistant. It's pretty straightforward. Healthcare assistants, there's a lot of terminologies um, to them. They're called personal support worker. They're called healthcare aides, healthcare assistants. Here in the Philippines, they're more commonly known as caregivers. But the difference is that when you say healthcare assistant, it's not limited to just working with the elderly. Although, although there is a huge demand in that industry because Canada is an aging population. So there will be a huge demand there, but let's say in the future, you wanna work in a hospital setting alongside nurses, you definitely can do that. You can even take care of children. So I have here a, um, a video of our healthcare assistants. Um, they've already graduated actually. So this is a bit of an old video, but these are our students who were absorbed by their co-op employers. So I hope you learned something from this video and then we will tackle the details of the program after. I have nothing but respect for the healthcare assistants because if it weren't for the healthcare assistants, the nurses don't know the patients or the residents the way that the healthcare assistants do. They are the first line of defense, if you will. They come to you and they know when your patient is having any kind of a bad day or a good day, they know them way better than I do as a nurse. And so I 100% depend on the healthcare assistants to come to me with whatever needs to be done for that patient. What I first noted about Stenberg College right away when I started here was that there are so many resources available to the students and the faculty and the school itself really cares about the success of Stenberg College students. What particularly impresses me about the HCA program here is the in-depth and breadth of knowledge and curriculum that is taught. It's not only just the provincial curriculum that's being taught, but it goes further so that the healthcare assistants can understand the diagnosis, not just what to do when this person has this. If they fully understand it, then they're going to do better in their career. Our HCA program, I feel, is one of the best because of the simulations lab, the nursing lab, the way that they have integrated the nursing instructors to be able to have them in the same classroom, sometimes in the same lab as the nursing students. So they have that cross-pollination of information with each other. 
I get really excited when I teach, and I'm sure some of my students, if asked, would say this about me. I'm not just talking about diabetes, for example. I get involved in the background of it and then how to care for said person with diabetes. And so what I hope to pass on to my students is to get excited about it and not just treat it as just a job. It's not just a job that pays the bills. You're helping people. You understand. You do this, and this is the rationale for it. And to be able to help people, and not only the patients, but their family and their extended family and the colleagues that you work with, I think it's really exciting for me, both on the floor, nursing, and to instill that into my students. What I like my students to take away from the classroom, not only into their clinical, but into their careers, is the ability to believe in themselves and that they really are making a difference. Growing old is inevitable, I suppose. And uh, from my point of view, I just do the best I can for myself and for other people. I really think that here the staff are wonderful. And uh, I just be, I'm just thankful that I'm in a place like this. Before the HCA program, I was a housewife and I have a, a regular jobs, but not a career. Coming to Canada, I have like big dream. For a starting point, it is very hard. I got like little bit, uh, little bit confident, okay, I can work in a gas station and I started working there. But you know, going and coming back, going and coming back, it's the same routine and then it's just, you know, stuck. The life is stuck. My life before this, I was a digital designer. It was just hard to deal with contract jobs and not knowing whether if I'm able to support my son next week. When I first start. All over it was a good experience, but I did have some ob obstacles. With the extra help from Stanford staff, I pulled through with success. We work together. If there is any kind of uh, problem, personal problem or the edu about the education, so we work together and so that, you know, everybody is fine. We were given all the tools and all the skills that we needed to, to have in the real world. Now, I got more confident that I can do better. All the comments I got from my preceptor, they said it did not feel like they're working with a student. It felt like they're working with another HCA. Iris called me one day to come for an interview. So, and then I got the job. I have a stable job where I have income coming in, which I love doing. And then with that, I can also invest into my hobbies, which is design now. I love working with elderly people. I love making a change, giving my minute or two and talk to them, make a difference in their life. Having this job, it's perfect for me. I remember one time I, I did go back, even though, even though I was already off clock, I went back and went to see um, one of the residents. And just seeing their faces react to you, even coming back to them to talk to them, it's. It's just rewarding. Not only it feels right, but it just, you're happy, you know? Knowing that you're making other people happy. I have a feeling that eventually people are gonna realize this is a good, perfect career choice. I have Okay, so now let us discuss the program. So this program is fully recognized by the BC Care Aid Registry. So there is sort of a regulatory body that uh, maintains the standard of practice for our healthcare assistance in the province. So that's BC Care Aid Registry. You can Google that and you can see that our program is fully recognized. So being a healthcare assistant, it's an essential work. It has a high employment demand. The program has paid co-op and job placement. We assist our students in registering for the BC Care Aid Registry after the completion of the program. And we have 100% employment rate. Okay, so if you um, check the BC Care Aid Registry, I wanna highlight this. Um, what you'll find is that there is a requirement for English proficiency, okay? Because a lot of you will definitely ask me, is IELTS required, is IELTS waived? IELTS will be required. And it's not because the school you know, it's just a school requiring it, but it's the BC Care Aid Registry requiring it. 
okay? So it's the regulatory body requiring it. Now you cannot get your registration without it. So with the IELTS, let's start with that. If you happen to have, um, you could take general or academic. If you happen to have 6.0 overall score and you have 6.0 in speaking, listening, no band lower than um, 5.5 in reading and writing, you can take the HCA diploma with co-op, okay? So it's a direct entry. It's just gonna be 8.5 months in total duration and you will have 2.5 months in paid co-op. That is the total tuition fee. Now, the total tuition fee that you're seeing here would already include assessment fee, registration fee, material usage, um, your co-op fees, your books, your medical coverage for the first three months. So everything is already included there. Um, when you pay your initial deposit fee, the rest of your balance can be paid per installment on a monthly on our, or on a quarterly basis. And this only starts when you're already in Canada. Now, let's say you have um, a lower score in your IELTS. Let's say it's 5.5 overall, no band lower than 5.5 in speaking and listening, and you have no band lower than 5.0 in reading and writing. Because of the requirement of the BC Care Aid Registry to have 6.0 overall score and you have not met that, we can still accept you, but you will have a three-month English studies component into your program. This three-month English studies will allow you to have 0.5 in your scores. So after you complete the program, you will have 6.0 overall IELTS score. So with this, you will have a total of 1.3 years in total duration. You'll have six months of paid co-op and the total tuition fee is 18,950. Again, it's already for the full duration, all in all of the books. There's no need for you to have additional on this. Now, one of the things that I also want to highlight is that let's say you have 6.0 overall score. You've met the IELTS score, right? but you want to have a three-month English studies component, no one's going to stop you if that's what you want to do. You can take the HCA Diploma with Co-op International if that is what you prefer. Okay. So do we have any bursaries and discounts? Uh, yes, for 2022. So this year, if you were, you're still able to join um, in October. So that is the last... Um, intake for the year, we will reimburse your IELTS test cost. So if you're going to take your IELTS this year and join October, um, we will deduct the $350 or credit you back, rather, credit you back through your tuition fee of up to $350 Canadian dollars. We will also be waiving your application and registration fee worth $400 Therefore, you're saving $750 here. Um, either type of variation, um, let's say you don't have English component or maybe you have the English component, this will still apply to you as long as you enroll this year. We normally have like the bursaries and discounts every year. So if you plan to do it next year, okay, um, just watch out for any announcements on our discounts and bursaries. Now, another thing to highlight here is that this program accepts year 12. That means that if you are a K-12 graduate, you definitely can enter the program. If you are a bachelor degree holder, let's say you're a BSN graduate and you did not practice your profession as a nurse and you want to go back to the medical industry, you definitely can take this program. Or maybe you've completed high school, you were from the old Philippine curriculum. As long as you have completed second year of college, you will be accepted. Another thing to highlight in this program is that our students can actually get a conditional job offer. So one of our employer partners are able to produce a conditional job offer so they can provide you with a part-time work and then work long-term work offer when you complete the program. And again, that's why we have 100% um, employment rate on this. Now, I mentioned in the beginning, we are a private institution. 
So for those of you who already know um, the ins and outs of a Canadian visa, student visa, you will not be eligible for a PGWP with us, okay? The postgraduate work permit is another visa that gives you an extension. Um, basically, students, what students do um, while they're under PGWP is they look for a job. They look for work sponsors. In our case, you don't need to do that. There's no need for you to look for a work sponsor. We already have them. During your co-op, you will already be introduced to them. And most of the time, even the co-op employers, they are the ones absorbing our students. So it's either you get an LMIA or maybe a long-term work sponsorship. It really depends. Our previous, um, or not previous, our recent graduates have multiple job offers. So it's more of, there's more jobs than there's graduates, basically. So with us, there is no need for PGWP. And our program still has an immigration pathway because once you accept that work offer from our partner employers, you definitely can enter these potential immigration pathways. Really depend on your profile. Um, I have a video here, and this is the last thing um, that I want to show you. And this is a video that we created, we shot back in January, I think, January with retirement concepts. This, she, they're one of the many partner employers that we have, and they are providing our students conditional job offers. So I wanna introduce you to them through this video. So let me play this for you. Hello everyone, my name is Jenica Liserio and I'm the Director of International Admissions and Recruitment for Southeast Asia. We are here with Sabrina Price and she is from Retirement Concepts. So hi Sabrina, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Hello everybody. Hello, thank you. All right, so let's get started. I'm just going to ask you a few questions um, about our partnership, Stanford College and Retirement Concept Partnership. So first of all, can you please introduce uh, Retirement Concepts to us? Yeah, no problem. So Retirement Concepts, we are one of the biggest private owned uh, senior home companies in British Columbia. So we have 23 homes. Uh, 20 of those are in British Columbia. One is in Alberta and one is in Quebec. So we are a very big uh, facility. We have over 6,000 people now that work for our organization. Um, and we are happy to have new people come and join us. Awesome. So um, for this year, we have collaborated and we are going to provide our students conditional job offers. We're going to provide them part-time work while they're studying and eventually will lead to, you know, a full-time job offer after they complete their program. So can you tell us more about that uh, partnership? Yeah, so we're really excited about being able to offer uh, you, everyone, uh, positions while, while you're going through school. So starting off, if you're in school, it's going to be hard to work full time. So you'll have the opportunity to work a support services worker, which would fall under the categories of, say, a housekeeper, laundry aide, or server, uh, or janitor. And then once you are going through your schooling and you've completed, say, your HCA uh, course, you'd be able to then, we'd be able to offer you an HCA position. Same thing if you were to complete your LPN course, we'd be able to offer you an LPN job, RN course, RN job. So throughout the journey with Stenberg, you'll be able to work with Retirement Concepts on that same journey uh, with various roles. All right, and where are the possible locations um, our students will be working in? Yeah, so we have the lovely locations on the island. Reference point would be Victoria, British Columbia. We have many homes. We have seven homes here on the island. Um, so I actually live on the island. I love it. It's a great place to be. Uh, our other locations that we're able to offer these conditional job offers would be in the interior of British Columbia. Um, another reference point for anyone to, ch to check it out would be Kamloops. Um, as well as Summerland and Williams Lake. So the interior is also beautiful, uh, many lakes and 
nature is lovely. All right, that's good. That's good to hear. Now, um, our students would like to know as well, especially because uh, some of them, they may be hired as a part-time worker or maybe when they're already working full-time. And these are different positions, as mentioned. They can be working as a support. They can be working as an LPN, RN. So maybe you can give us an idea of the salary rates for each position. I know that it will change eventually when, you know, when they start working. But right now, can you give us an idea of the salary rates? Yeah, I can give you an approximate. Again, all of our homes are what we what we call unionized, so they're all a little bit different. So these numbers I'm giving are approximate. Um, but say for a support services worker, so a housekeeper, laundry, or a server, right now the wages are around twenty dollars per hour, approximately, give or take a few dollars on yeah. either side. Um, and then a healthcare aid right now is tw approximately twenty five to twenty seven dollars per hour. Uh, LPN is around the 32 to say $36 per hour and an RN is uh, anywhere upwards of 40 plus dollars an hour. Thank you for that. Now, because our students are also studying, right? And we would like them to have some sort of security that they can work at Retirement Concepts after they they complete their program so can you tell us about the conditional job offer that we will be providing the students absolutely so once you guys go through Westenberg and you make your commitment to going Westenberg we'll then be able to work directly with them to have interviews with uh, all of you and then at that point if we feel it is a right fit for both parties then we'll be able to offer you a conditional job offer before you even uh, come to Canada which is lovely so that gives you want a peace of mind that you have an employer uh, ready to go for when you get here. It also allows us and the excitement of having, knowing that you're coming to join our team. So uh, the conditional job offer, I would say is very exciting between, for all of us. Yes. Yeah, we're very excited about it. Exactly, yes. So um, as a last question, Sabrina, can you um, tell us what students can expect from Retirement Concepts as their new employer? Yeah. So for us, we are very big on uh, growth, service, integrity, and trust. That's our mission statement. So that's not just uh, for corporate employees or for, you know, managers, that's for everyone. We want to make sure that people who are joining retirement concepts are uh, really there for our residents because at the end of the day, without the residents, we wouldn't be here. So making sure that every day you're trying to make the seniors lives as good as possible that's what we're looking for. We're looking for someone who's compassionate and excited about the opportunity to make a difference in these seniors' lives. Um, retirement Concepts as well as us being a private employer, it's a bit smaller than working for one of the big health authorities that could have you know, upwards of 30,000 employees where you're not as close with your coworkers, say, or your managers. At Retirement Concepts, we treat everyone like family, and I, and I genuinely believe that. We treat everyone like a piece of a family. Um, so that's what you can expect from Retirement Concepts. All right. Thank you so much, Sabrina. All of these are very exciting, not just for our students, also from Stenberg College. We're pretty excited about this new venture with you, and we are confident that our students will be very happy with you know this partnership and so they have something to expect when they arrive in Canada. So thank you so much for giving us your time today. I really appreciate that. No problem. Thank you so much. Bye everyone. So there you go, that's Sabrina Price. I hope you, that you learned something from my presentation. Just as a last thing before I go in uh, turn you over back to the Roman and Associates team. Just as a summary, Stanford College has over 30 years of experience in providing quality education. We have outstanding support services to the students. And overall at Stanford, with all the other programs, we have 98% employment rate. And specifically for HCA, we have 100%. So there's paid co-ops, job placement, conditional job offers, immigration pathways are available, and our tuition fee is really affordable and has flexible payment terms. So there you have it. I hope that you learned something. 
And thank you so much for listening. So I'm going to turn you back over to our um, Remind and Associates team. Thank you. Thank you, Jenica, for that very informative presentation. I'm very sure that our attendees was able to learn a lot and get, you know, those important details out of your presentation uh, about healthcare assistant program to Canada. By the way, I can already see some questions posted in our chat box. Uh, and uh, to our viewers, if you have questions or clarifications, um, please feel free to post them in our chat box then. We'll ad uh, address We'll address to that uh, to those questions one by one, of course, with uh, Miss Jenica and me to answer those questions of yours. Okay, again, guys, don't forget to send your detailed resume for eligibility check to assessment at romancis.ca and use the subject line assessment for health HCA at Stanford College for um, checking off of your eligibility to apply for healthcare assistant program to Canada. Okay, uh, Ms. Jenica, can we now, now proceed uh, to our Q&A so yes, definitely. we can have those questions addressed. Okay, so... This is the first question uh, posted in our Q&A chat box. So are we allowed to work while ongoing study? If yes, for how many hours? So this question came from Ms. Romeline Morcilia. Okay, yes. So under your student permit, you will be allowed to work 20 hours per week. So 20 hours while you're studying, and that will start when your program starts. During the school holidays, school breaks, you are allowed to work full time. And then the good part there is you are able to work up to 40 hours when you're doing co-op because you have 20 hours coming from your co-op and then 20 hours per week again coming from your student permit. So there you go. Uh, you're allowed to work. Oh, you are on mute, uh, Rose. Okay, another question from Miss Lorna Bernadette Verseles. Do you offer PGWP? So just to okay. recap of what Miss Janica has discussed. I actually just Lorna. mentioned that at the <laughs> okay. um, end part of our presentation. So we are a private institution. There is no PGWP. However, we don't actually need it. So one of the things that um, you need to understand is that um, PGWP does not guarantee PR. It's another visa where you're allowed to stay in Canada for work. And normally, students look for their work sponsor during this time. Now, we don't need it because we already have work sponsors available. So from student visa, you can transition to a working visa because it's... with. It actually depends. Maybe you will be absorbed by the co-op employer or maybe a different employer partner will offer you a long-term work sponsorship. But um, the bottom line there is that there is work, um, long-term work sponsorship or LMIA that will be available to you through our employer partners. So thank you for answering that question. I hope... Um... Uh, the, 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 you know, the clarification made by Ms. Chenica uh, suffice or answer the questions of Ms. Lorna. And um, should you have follow-up question, Ms. Lorna, feel free to post them in our chat box again. Okay, one more question from Ms. Jasmine Privado. Uh, does the program has age limit? Okay, so madalas itong matanong sa amin. No age limit as long as you are 18 years old and above and you're not of a retirement age. Our most mature student on campus, I think she's 48. Um, so, diba, mature age, but she is um, still an able body, right? As long as you're not of a retirement age, you will be allowed. There's no age limit. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jenica. And uh, another follow-up question from Ms. Lorna Verseles. 
uh, dependent po. Actually, Miss Lorna, for the application of your student visa, yes, you are eligible to bring your dependent with you. And on top of each dependent, meron po tayong additional fee uh, in processing their uh, visa for you to bring them with you in Canada. So as we proceed with your, with your application, we will be discussing uh, the specific details of that application. Okay, so again, you are eligible to bring your dependent with you. And uh, just to manage your expectation, all will be subject for the approval of immigration officer. But of course, with Roman and Associates Immigration Services, we will help you increase the possibility of having your visa application approved. Okay, so I hope I answered your question now uh, well. And, um, and another question again, okay, so we have the same question from Ms. Joanne. Uh, Faluyan about the age limit. Okay, so like what Miss Jenica said, there's no age limit for the course. As long as you are physically, you know, fit and you're not yet into your retirement age, then you can enroll for the program. Okay, so okay, so Miss Shaira Alvalara, another question posted by her: How much is the tuition fee? So, Miss Jenica. Okay, so for the tuition fee, um, again, it would really depend on what type of variation you're going to take with us because there is a, the HCA program has an IELTS requirement. So if you meet the 6.0 uh, score, you can go ahead and do the direct entry where um, the tuition fee will be 15400 for the full duration already. And this is just an initial deposit of 5150 CAD. Now, if you happen to, um, let's say, have a lower IELTS score result, like 5.5 overall score, then you will be required to take the 1.3 years of the HCA diploma, but it will have six months of paid co-op. So you'll have three months of English study, six months of paid co-op, and a total of 1.3 years. So that's 18,950 for the full duration already. Um, initial deposit is 5,150 still. And our tuition fee will already include the reservation, uh, not reservation, assessment fee. Um, it will include the books, material usage call of fees, the, uh, student fees, your um, medical coverage for the first three months. So everything is all in. Thank you, Ms. Jenica. Same question goes uh, um, to Ms. Chona Valencia. So same question, how much is the tuition fee? Um, I hope um, the answer of Ms. Jenica a while ago satisfy your question or I was able to answer this question about the tuition fee, Ms. Chona. And if you have follow-up questions, uh, feel free to chat them and post them again in our chat box. Okay, so another question from Ms. Lorna. Thank you, Ms. Lorna, for being so, you know, participative and very much active with our session for tonight. How much is the agency fee? Okay, in simpler, uh, in simple terms, Ms. Lorna, in Philippine Peso, you will be needing to prepare 1.2 to 1.5 million pesos. But wait, the 1.5 million doesn't go directly to the tuition fee or um, <clears throat> the agency fee. Okay, majority of the amount that I've uh, mentioned goes to the Proof of fund, which is the the tip, uh, the you know, which uh, something that commonly tagged as the show money whenever we apply for a visa. But what's good about uh, uh, applying for student visa uh, to Canada, the POF um, doesn't necessarily mean that the fund should be under your name. So anyone can be your uh, can be your sponsor if it's either your family member, colleague, friends or anyone can be your sponsor provided they can provide the necessary requirements to support that they are very much willing to sponsor your application. Again, it doesn't have to be under your name. So ito kasi yung madalas na nagiging problem natin, di ba? We are very much afraid of the idea na there is um, show money for the application. Pero nakakalimutan natin yung idea that now they are already allowing that uh, POF or proof of fund is no longer man, um, mandatory na dapat yung money is nasa pangalan ni principal applicant. Okay, again, you have to prepare 1.2 to 1.5 million wherein 200 to 300,000 goes to the agency fee. Then the 
800,000 for the tuition fee, but like what Ms. Jenica said, you will be needing to just place a down payment of 5,150 Canadian dollars and the rest can be paid amortized as you reach Canada. Okay, so for, uh, for the detailed discussion about the fees, of course, we are very much uh, pleased to assist you as we go to the program details discussion um, as soon as we receive your CV for the application. Okay, so uh, Ms. Jenica, there is another question from Ms. Rona Vibile Fernando. Okay, correct me if I am wrong. The total time we can work is 40 hours per week, 20 hours from the co-op and 20 hours for our student visa while we are studying. Okay, so 20 hours per week while you're studying, yes. All right. During holidays and breaks, you can go on full time. And then once the next start yung co-op, that's the only time that you will have the chance to work up to 40 hours per week with your co-op being 20 hours per week and then your student permit being 20 hours per week as well. So there you go. Tama naman yung explanation natin. Okay, so thank you. Okay, so we have the same question from Miss Diane Oabel. So do we need to present POF? Yes, ma'am, with the application or uh, with the as we process your student visa application and launch uh, it to our uh, immigration, you will need one of the requirements is the POF. So this is the proof of fund. But what's good about this requirement is this is not the typical one. Alam natin that the fund should be under the princ principal applicant's name. So, pwede ho siya under sa ibang tao. Again, I repeat, anyone can be your sponsor provided they can provide the necessary requirements to support the claim that they can sponsor you for this application. Okay, so how much uh, do you need for the POF? Um, uh, you just simply need to prepare 17,000 Canadian dollar for the whole year. Uh, that's uh, the Canadian government requirement for an individual to survive for the whole year year so you must have at least 17,000 Canadian dollar in your POF of course in uh, you just need to convert that one to Philippine peso so you um what are the acceptable uh, sorry um let me just add this one what are the acceptable POF of course um bank certificates bank statements for the last four uh, four months um actually yung mga time deposit the magbamba sure uh before the end of the processing of your visa so pwede yung mga yon and um you can uh, the account can either be local accounts or international accounts provided we can uh, provide uh documents from the bank to support that you really have or someone uh, is very much willing to sponsor you and you have that specific amount on your account so again that's a requirement pof yes you will be needing to provide that one okay so Okay, so Ma'am Lorna, meron po kayo another question. Nagpo-provide po kayo ng POF? I mean the agency. Okay po. Actually, Ms. Lorna, it's the principal, it's the applicant who will provide for the POF. So, um, again, hindi na po tayo mahihirapan na mag-provide kasi anyone can be your sponsor. So, hindi naman po siya necessarily na image of family member, relative or what. So, if you have friends na waiting po mag, you know, uh, to give you the, re the requirements, bank statements, bank, um, bank certificate. So, pwede po natin sila i-consider as your POF. Plus, hindi naman po ibig sabihin that a POF uh, will, just came for, uh, will just come from one bank account. So, pwede po tayo consolidated. So, let's say, for example, from a, a specific sponsor, willing po siya mag, um, you know, pwede po siya mag-sponsor ng 300,000, then the other sponsor is 500,000, then pagkasamahin po natin yun until we come up dun sa necessary amount to satisfy the POF requirement for your application. So, pwede po natin silang pagsamasamahin, then we'll just collate the amount needed. Okay, so... Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Ms. Lorna, and we just love the you know, po yung, um, participation kasi napaka, you know, alam ho talaga natin that you are very much uh, interested po dun sa uh, program po, discussion po natin for tonight. Okay, so Ms. Christine May Delgado, can uh, you bring your dependents? Yes, ma'am, actually eligible po kayo to bring your dependents with you. Again, um, 
on top of every dependent, meron po tayong additional fees and of course, another supporting documents um, to support the claim na, yes, you can bring them, but um, the idea, you know, the idea of convincing the immigration officer to prove to him or her that you can, you know, sustain your stay in Canada by providing, you know, financial documents um, that you are financially capable of surviving the whole year round or the two year, per, depende po dun sa haba ng program nyo as students sa Canada, okay? Do I have to study caregiver if I had studied two year course in midwifery? Okay, so if you are um, planning to become a healthcare assistant in Canada and ayaw mo nang mag-aral, you can apply directly to the BC Care, um, BC Healthcare um, parang application for, uh, platform nila. So you will be an internationally educated healthcare professional, right? it's going to be a long process for you. So you'll have to like submit your educational background, English language skills, magpapa-assess ka ng credential mo. There will be an international credential credential evaluation service. Ipapaayos mo yung evaluation report mo. And then it is possible that you will undergo an NCAS competence assessment. This is an exam where it, um, assesses your competency level, whether you meet the Canadian level. And then um, there is a possibility that you will have to have remedial education if it's going to be required. Kasi hindi naman magka-match yung midwifery sa healthcare assistant. Eh. Hindi naman sila parehong trabaho. So there is that possibility of studying still. So uh, you can do that if you want to make it a bit more complicated. So, the easiest way talaga is for you to just study a healthcare program. Because either way, you'll still study at some point. So, that is our recommendation if ang gusto mo naman ay maging healthcare assistant. Not unless gusto mo midwifery. We won't offer a program though for midwives. But if that is the career that you want to take, there are some programs, I believe, that are partnered with Roman and Associates, they might be able to help you. Okay. So, this is a, um, actually, this is a related question uh, with that of, uh, uh, sorry, who's that? Uh, Miss Eperlita. So, another question from Miss Joanne Faliuban. I finished my nursing course. Do I need to enroll for caregiver? Okay. So, um, again, number one, you have to to ask yourself whether you want to become a healthcare assistant or you want to pursue your own profession. So like for midwives, do you want to pursue midwifery? Um, as a nurse, do you want to pursue nurse, uh, nursing? Um, if you want to become a healthcare assistant, then yes, then this, this is the program for you. Kahit kasi nurse ka na, RN ka na, it doesn't necessarily translate to a registration at the HCA um, registry. So, um, if you are a nurse though, kung registered nurse ka and you have a work experience, I think it would be best for you to submit your resume to Romance and, Roman and Associates team because we have a program called um, Postgraduate Diploma in Canadian Nursing, which is very specific to registered nurses, um, to IENs, Internationally Educated Nurses who have work experience. And if you plan to become a nurse, you want to gain your registration there as a licensed practical nurse or maybe as a registered nurse, that program, the PGDCN program, will help you do that. So I think, hindi ko masasagot direct yung tanong mo. You have to choose first kung um, mag-nursing ka ba talaga or mag hca ka. And then kung mag-nursing ka, then let's see if you qualify for the postgrad diploma in Canadian nursing. Pag hindi ka nag-qualify, then HCA would be your next best bet. Why? Because then you're able to still enter the healthcare industry in Canada and then eventually uh, go for the LPN program. There you go. 
Okay, so thank you again, Ms. Jenica, for discussing that one. And I believe Ms. Jasmine Privado has the same question with that of Ms. Joanne. Uh, if they can, you know, still study um, caregiver. Sorry, do I still need to study because I am already finished? Because I already finished caregiver course. So we had the okay. same question before. And Ms. Jenica, actually, ito, okay. itong caregiver course na to, if you're talking about NC2, caregiver yung sa test da, if you're talking about that, it will help you sa student visa application mo because that just means that you already have a background in caregiver. However, it's not transferable to, um, to a healthcare position in Canada. Wala siyang bearing. Yung ating NC2 caregiver course in TESTA has no bearing for you to become an HCA. It will help, it will help sa student visa application mo but not to the program itself. So if you want to become an HCA in Canada, you really have to take the, the program. Ganun na mangyayari. Okay, so next question from, again from Ms. Diane Oabel. Allowed ba if fiancé or friend sa POF? Yes, ma'am, allowed po siya. So again, anyone can be your uh, sponsor for the POF. Okay, then... Uh, for this, uh, for the next question uh, from Miss, uh, sorry, Nap uh, Fernand uh, Tolentino, do you have dental hygiene program or dental assistant program? Ako wala po tayo niyan. How I wish, pero wala. <laughs> Iba po ang ano niya. We have, we have the, the HCA in the nursing. Limited yung program that we deliver to international students. Although if you check us out, you'll see there's a lot of medical programs. But you need to go to the international um, portion of our program list. It's limited because we only provide programs to the international students that have, you know, a pathway to permanent residency and that we are able to secure your co-op employment. Uh-huh, I'm still reading. How long do I have to take the healthcare program if in case for? So, program duration, Ms. Jenica. Again, okay. a question okay. from Ms. Eperlita Galicia. Okay. So, I believe you will be receiving um, a copy anyway of these details. Pero, again, yung two variations nga na nabanggit natin, if it's a direct entry, it's going to be 8.5 months with 2.5 months of paid co-op. And then if you take uh, the international version, it's 1.3 years with six months of paid co-op. Okay, so another question from Ms. Lorna. MOI po pala for English requirements? Okay, um, no, <laughs> actually no. What I'm gonna do, I have a link here that I'm going to share with everyone. I'm going to type it in the chat box and feel free to check that out. And the reason that I always share this is um, para lang malaman ninyo that it's really the BC Care Aid Registry that requires the English proficiency exam. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, the test. So it can be CLBPP, like Canadian Language Benchmark Placement Test. It can be CELPIP, Canadian English Language Proficiency Index Program. IELTS, KL, and TOEFL. Yun lang ang tinatanggap ng BC Care Aid Registry for the English proficiency. So we only follow what the BC Care Aid Registry requires. So we cannot accept an MOI only. Um, you have to have your IELTS. It can be general naman. So okay lang general or academic. Um, thank you, Ms. Jenica, again for answering or attend this question. Again, another question from Sir Nap Tolentino. Kailan po next offering ng HCA? I believe he is referring to the admission dates po ba? Yes, so yung okay. start date natin. We, um, I would recommend that you join um, October. We still have a bit of time. I hope you can make it. Um, so October is the final intake for this year. Kapag hindi naman kasi nare-receive yung visa on time, it's very easy for us to defer the student to the next intake, which would be, um, it would really depend kung meron kang English component or wala. So it can either be January 
or March. So if you decide to defer to the next intake, let's say 2023, wala po tayong additional fees doon. So I would recommend take the October and then complete everything as quickly as you can because the school enrollment can be quick. It can be as quick as, you know, within two weeks, tapos ka na. As long as you're also very, you know, uh, responsive. Okay, so another question from Miss uh, Maria Bakongko. Do you offer study loan? Uh, for the school, no. Um, for the school, no. Because as an applicant for a student visa, you're supposed to have enough funds to support yourself for a year as required by the um, Canadian Immigration, di ba? So, kailangan po na, na kaya niyong supportahan yung sarili ninyo. Um, I think you can look into banks locally for that, but for the school, we can only offer you, you know, discounts and bursaries. Okay, so uh, on behalf of sa part naman ng Roman Canadian, um, unfortunately, we don't offer, of course, uh, study loan for our applicants. Again, um, what's good about Roman Canadian Immigration Services is that we do not bill our student one time. So we bill on a per stage basis. So whenever the document or the process needs to be done, that's the only time that we will be asking from you to pay a specific fee. So unlike other organizations offering the same services, parang they are asking you to pay the whole amount one time. So with Roman, since we do understand the availability of the funds, so we do not really bill on time. But again, of course, you have to settle all necessary fees for us to successfully process your visa application. Okay, another question from Miss uh, sorry, Miss Rochelle Gonzal. Do you accept OET po? No, um, I believe OET is for Australia and New Zealand. So, hindi po. Yung link that I shared on the chat box, that's where you'll see all of the acceptable English language proficiency na, yun nga, ina-accept ng BC Care Aid Registry. Okay, from Miss Donna May Kabilin, if done na po sa program, pwede na po bang kunin ang dependent? Actually, ma'am, if that's your decision na mauna po muna kayo, then you just wait for you to, you know, to formally uh, get into schooling and <clears throat> gusto niyo po talaga makuha yung dependent mo. Yes, like what I've said before, eligible naman po kayo to get your dependent. But then again, uh, meron po tayong additional requirements and additional fees to settle from your end and the application would still be subject for approval for the immigration officer. Of course, with your man Canadian naman po, we will be helping you successfully secure the visa, uh, necessary visa for your dependents. Okay, so uh, for uh, one question from uh, Ms. Diane Oabel. So, free po ba yung assessment yung sa Roman? <clears throat> Anyone here po can send po the resume? Yes, of course, Miss Diane. Thank you for asking. Again, our assessment is for free. So uh, we'll just wait for your resume to be sent po dun sa um, email address flashed on your screen. So this is um, the assessment at romancis.ca. And we're very much uh, pleased to assess your CV and eligibility uh, to apply for, uh, for healthcare assistant program. So after we receive your CV, we will be sending you the result of our assessment. Again, that's free. And anyone um, in this room can apply. And I would encourage everyone to start sending your CV right after our webinar. Okay. So, Suri is within Vancouver downtown or Nanaimo area. Will be within Vancouver, um, pero Surrey is its own. You know, it has its own downtown, parang sub area siya ni Vancouver. Um, so if you have relatives in Vancouver downtown, that's gonna be about forty minute train ride um, to to Vancouver from Surrey downtown. If you are going to Nanaimo, you have to take the ferry. Um, it's going to be around two hours, I think, or more. So, nasa Vancouver siya. Okay, so no more questions in our chat box. But we since we have another Q&A chat box intended for 
questions we have another questions uh, another question from miss I already we all we already answered this one so another question from miss imelda baya is als graduated is allowed to this program can you clarify what als graduated is um i'm not familiar uh, yes me too i'm not familiar but it's something that we did to ask from miss imelda baya is yes. you can type also the you know for oh, us an, to properly an, address. Anong course ba ito or what? I'm not sure. So maybe <laughs> okay. you can clarify that. Um, so I believe this would be an additional knowledge to everybody because me myself, I'm not re I'm not also familiar with ALS uh, course. So Ms. Imelda Bayais, if you can, you know, clarify and tell us what specific course is uh, ALS course. Okay. So while waiting for Ms. Imelda Bayais answer, Another question from our Q&A, do you offer study now, pay later program? Again, um, we've heard from Ms. Jenica that um, Stanford College unfortunately doesn't offer study now, pay later. And also with Roman and Associates Immigration Services, unfortunately, we don't have the specific scheme, but we can help you with, uh, you know, um, with that availability of your funds issue by the uh, supporting the idea of we do not really bill one time so we build on a per stage basis and uh, we just uh, we'll be asking you to pay a specific fee for the process whenever it's already needed okay I just so, want to add to that rose because i okay. know um a few like um institutions that not schools but maybe agencies that offer a study now pay later program yeah. You have to check that carefully because it doesn't mean that wala kayo talagang completing babayaran. It could be that it's just, let's say, the initial deposit or half the initial deposit or maybe your your um, um, flight mo lang yung covered. It's not going to be entirely free. Okay, so you have to check that and make sure um, of all the details. Pero yun nga, we, we don't actually have that. Yes, yeah, so tama naman yun. So, um, yung point lang ni Ms. Janica is we really need to be sure talaga whenever we talk to an agency offering study now, pay later. Kasi some of the agencies talaga or organization offering the same services. This is just part of their marketing strategy, you know, to to uh, to invite and recruit more applicants to apply for a specific program. But then again, the bottom of the process um there are just limited scope for that program. So we have to be uh, more careful in uh, you know, applying for study now, pay later. Okay, so uh, another question from Ms. Romilin Morcilla. I believe this question is intended for Ms. Jenica. How about the accommodation, Ms. Jenica? Okay, so for the accommodation, because we are in Surrey um, downtown, we're in the city center, wala tayong dorm, okay? But um, most of our students, kasi we already have relatives, or what they do is the, once they have a visa grant, that's the time that they look for their accommodation. So as a school, we provide you with a list of safe websites where you can find your own accommodation because it would really be best if you're the one looking for it. Kasi syempre kung ano yung preference ninyo sa utsura ng, ng accommodation nyo, di ba? Or if, even if it's a shared accommodation. So some of our students, they do shared accommodation and if you can find your own, we can look into our own network to provide you with a list. So, may mga students kasi kami na may mga available sila na accommodation sa place nila, dun sa kung saan man sila nag or, you know, um, some of them, they have relatives who offer, let's say, their free, um, my, my extra room sila. So, they do that, which is safe also because that's your, you know, your co-students. So we can do that. We can share you with you um, network where there's accommodation available. But you have to, of course, pay for that on your own. Now, one of the things, siguro na, we need to know here in the Philippines, diba, when we rent, we give out, um, let's say, two months deposit, one month advance, something like that. Um, when you rent, or you know you take your your accommodation in Canada you don't actually need to pay that much you can even save that slot or that accommodation for just let's say the first 3 days or even just for one day depende sa landlord or landlady ninyo 
one makausap ninyo. Minsan nga iba wala pa. But you don't have to shell out one month, two months, three months worth of um, just to reserve your accommodation. Pwedeng mga three days lang, ganyan five days. So to give you an idea also of the range, again, it will depend sa how near you are in the city center or anong type of accommodation baka ayaw mo nang may shared. Baka gusto mo on your own, you have your own flat, of course, that will cost you more. Um, your accommodation can range from 350 Canadian dollars monthly, including all utilities, to around 800. Again, it depends kung anong type of accommodation ang kukunin mo. Um, most of our students, like, maybe 90% of our students, they're able to find their own accommodation and or they have relatives. Sobrang konti lang yung nanghingi talaga ng assistance to be endorsed to our network. Kasi madali lang yan eh, yung sa accommodation part. So I hope that's um, helpful to you. Okay. Um, let's just go back to the previous question wherein we encounter the ALS. So, if allowed by yung mga ALS graduate for this program. So, Miss Diane Owabel was able to, you know, to search that one in Google. And, you know, thank you for uh, Miss Diane for sharing this uh, to us. So, uh, Miss Jenica, the, alter, the ALS stands for Alternative Learning System. So, this is a part so of the uh, yeah, learning uh, system in the uh, Philippines that is, being give, that is given to those who cannot, you know, access formal education in schools. Ah, okay. I get what you mean. Okay, nagigets yeah. ko na. I'm actually aware of the ALS, but then, um, are you talk because there's two types there? Okay, high school. Kapag high school, um, like we transition to K12 ne. So I know for ALS, if you are able to take the exam, that then certifies you that you're now eligible for a tertiary level. So if that is the case and your education is equivalent to year 12, that is acceptable. Kasi as long as year 12 equivalency naman siya. Um, ALS in high school, I'm more familiar with what's the old system because I'm from the old system, which is just grade 10, tapos di ba magka-college ka. Um, so I'm more familiar with that. So I haven't really heard an ALS for a K-12, but if there is... Um, of course, we will consider just as long as it's a year 12 equivalency kasi. Now, if you're talking about a college degree, I think an, um, an alternative learning system for a college degree is the ETIAP. Um, I'm just not sure if um, meron tayo, kasi pag college degree na, that means na complete na yung high school, eh, di ba? Na complete na yung year 12. That's actually acceptable also. And I know that there are some ETIAP um, institutions that can be um, recognized as for as a uh, as parang college level talaga siya for um, international standards. So you, I think you have to just verify. I would recommend you submit your resume to assessment at romancias.ca and include your transcript of records or kung ano mang certificate yung sa ALS mo because there's those different types kung anong level yung recognized na completed mo. There you go. Okay. So for Miss, uh, actually, that uh, I believe that question came from Miss Glyza. So um, Miss Glyza, for the ALS learning, if you are an ALS graduate of uh, that still depends on the program na tapos mo. So, might as well, what we, um, better to do is you just send us your CV then include what Ms. Jerica said, the necessary certificates that you obtained for out of that ALS um, uh, educational uh, what do we, what do we, learning system. Okay, so, so we can, you know, we can assess your eligibility and provide us with attachments so we can check. Okay, so... Ms. Jenica, we still have, you know, lots of questions in our chat box. And again, I just love this audience. They are very much active and I can see that they are really interested with what we've discussed for tonight. And okay, there you go. 
Okay, another question um, from Sir Leo Gil Jerry Harilio. How about po if my existing application, Home Child Caregiver Pilot Program, pwede, po, pwede din po mag-submit ng application? Thank you po. Yes, uh, can I answer Ms. Jenica that question? Okay, yes, actually, um, yung pagsasend naman po ng application doesn't limit you to, you know, uh, to one uh, specific pathway. As long as you are eligible for that specific pathway na gusto nyo po applyan, yes, you can submit and reapply for another pathway. So, kung meron po kayong uh, existing application under home uh, child care uh, caregiver pilot program and you want to uh, try the he healthcare assistant program as long as you are eligible to apply, yes, you can apply. Okay, so that's uh, from Sir Leo Harilio. Um, and also, I encountered two questions, this, uh, two the same questions, Ms. Jenica, about the schedule ng HCA program next year. Yeah, so I think I mentioned um, then kanina na it would depend if you have, um, after the qualification, whether you will have your English requirement or not, yung three-month English. So normally, our intakes would be October, January, March. Yan. Kapag may English kasi na component for October, start usually nag-start sila ng July. So yung mga starts namin, January, March, July, October. Okay. So... Those questions came from, again, Sir Nap Tolentino. Thank you for asking. And Ms. Gracious Ramon. Okay. And what, uh, more questions from uh, Sir Leo Hardelio on process po status ng application ma. Um, Sir Leo, ask ko lang po kung saan po tayo nag- uh, Where do, uh, did you apply for the, what do you call this? The child care caregiver pilot program. So if it's from other organization or agency, uh, then you tend to, you wish to apply with Roman. Pwede naman ho yun, provided kung hindi pa talaga nalalodge yung application nyo with IRCs. Okay, so that's a bit conflict po kasi once um, the first service provider na napili nyo was, uh, was able to lodge your application na. So then makikita ni immigration officer na meron kang dalawang application. So for this one, as long as wala pang nalalodge na applications IRCC, then you can still apply for another one and uh, you just need to choose which uh, specific uh, program you, you, you really want to pursue with uh, your uh, application. So, okay. So, uh, Ms. Lorna, again, okay. Another question from Ms. Lorna, 200,000 agency po, uh, people no ma'am actually um 200,000 is not exact um amount po so what i have given you kanina ma'am this is just a, a range of uh the amount that you will need to prepare so nasa 200 to 200 uh, sorry 200 to 300,000 ma'am to cover all the agency fees necessary and perform the necessary documentary procedures for your application and as we go along with your application, ma'am, once we receive your CV, we'll send you an eligibility uh, check email wherein um, naka-itemize po doon what specific uh, uh, fees goes to this document. So makikita niyo po doon. And if you have questions, ma'am, we will be discussing with you all those details. Okay, so eto kay, I believe this question is for Ms. Jenica from, uh, sorry, from Clary Zill. Uh, Salgit. As ko lang po, I have the uh, IELTS done with the results of overall score band of 5.5. But my reading result was 4.5. Do I still need to repeat my IELTS exam? It's an UKVI IELTS score. Yes. Yes. My, if you do not meet a certain band score, wala kasing, wala kasi si IELTS na nagtatest ka lang ng one particular band score eh. Walang ganun eh. Talagang uulitin mo siya. So, yes, you have to repeat that um, yung 4.5 mo. Kasi reading and writing minimum is 5.0. Okay? And the speaking and listening at 5.5. Actually, this score does not even, um, it doesn't meet the HCA registration requirement yet. 
Kaya kapag um, you meet a 5.5 sa reading mo, 6.0, uh, I mean 5.5 yung overall mo, um, listening, speaking mo is 5.5, reading, writing, 5.0, pwede ka pa rin namin i-accept, but then we will add a three-month English component to your program just so you can receive a 0.5 in all of your bands. Ganun ang mangyayari. So I think... Um, I think nabanggit din ni Clara Rizil, I think siya rin to na BSN graduate na siya and you're working in a hospital and then caregiving, uh, caregiver um, meron ka nung sa TESDA. So yes, kailangan mo talaga. Also, Clara Rizil, just to let you know ha, kapag, kasi you're already a registered nurse, I believe kung BSN graduate ka, nag-work ka sa hospital, kung registered nurse ka, mas mataas pa yung hinihingi nila na IELTS score. It's actually 7.0. So, I would suggest go for reviews, mga ganyan. Marami namang mga resources dyan. And then, try to pull your grades higher para at least makapasok ka kahit sa HCA. And then, once you become part of, of Stanford kasi, we have English um, assistance talaga. So, you can join those para mas ma-pull up pa yung ano mo, yung English um, scores mo in the future if you decide na mag-RN or LPN. Okay, thank you. And um, I hope Ms. Janik was able to answer your question, Ms. Clary Zale. And in our, you know, list of participants, someone is raising her hand. Ms. Amana Morohom, you have a question, Ms. Amana. Please unmute yourself, Miss. Uh, uh, sorry, Amana, if you want to ask a uh, question, specific question, so we can, you know, address um, your concern right away. Okay, so. Um, yes, if you are hesitant to, you know, to unmute yourself, Miss Amana, I suggest you can just, you know, post your question in our chat box so we can just read that one so everybody can hear. And another question from Miss Hannah. Uh, I sorry, Hannah is uh, raising her hand. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Okay, Hannah, what's your question? Hello, Hannah. Hello? Hello? Hannah? Okay. So, ayun guys, if you have questions and you are hesitant to unmute yourself, um, we appreciate you raising your hand and um, better if you can just post your question but uh, uh, everybody can you know can hear it when, uh, when we read your questions in our chat box ah uh, okay not audible okay ah uh, okay so i give you the permis uh, permission to unmute yourself you have questions ha uh, hannah if you have question you may just post it in our chat box so i can read it then if it's to uh, to me or to Miss Jenica, we can answer your question right away. Okay, so while waiting for Hannah and Miss Amana to post their question, as of this moment, wala na ako nakikita ng questions, and I'm very much you know happy and um, um, you know that our audience are very much active and participative as we as they joined us in tonight's session and i do hope that this number of attendees was able will uh, will be sending their cvs after this session okay so would like to expound the ielts difference about the ielts difference about one uh 1.3 years and 8.5 months program that okay. questions uh, that question came from miss hannah okay so hannah um, when you want to become a registered healthcare aide, um, the BC Care Aid Registry requires a certain score for IELTS, right? So, ang nire require talaga nila is 6.0 overall score, speaking and listening 6.0, uh, 
And then, yung reading and writing 5.5, yan ang accepted nila. That's the minimum requirement. Now, if you meet that in your IELTS um, result, then you can go for a direct entry. Hindi mo nakakailangan eh ng English component sa program mo. Which means, you can go for the direct entry which has a duration of 8.5 months. So, mas maikli siya because wala ng English component, pero mas maikli rin naman ang co-op nito, 2.5 months. You can take that. Walang problema. Magkakaroon ka pa rin yan ng mga employer offers for sure. Now, if you don't meet that English requirement, halimbawa, mas mababa yung nakuha mo. 5.5 overall yung score mo. Tapos, speaking, listening, 5.5. Um, reading, writing mo is 5.0. Diba? Mas mababa siya ng 0.5 sa lahat ng bands and the overall. We will still accept. However, we will include a three-month English component to the program, okay? Making it a bit longer. And then, mas mahaba rin yung co-op kasi kapag gano'n, nagiging six months. So, nagiging total of 1.3 years siya. So, with that total of 1.3 years, after you complete the program, yung IELTS score mo, because this is, um, you will be taught by um, IELTS examiners, and IELTS experts. So, yung English component of our program will automatically add 0.5 to your scores. Kaya pag natapos mo yung program, mamimit mo na yung minimum requirement of the BC Care Aid Registry. Therefore, you can now be registered. So, yun yung difference niya. Kaya, binabanggit ko kanina na um, anong ilang duration, well, it depends on your IELTS scoring. Now, there are some students na even if they meet the IELTS results, you know, I, I mean the IELTS score, the minimum requirement of 6.0, they still want an English component attached to their program just because they probably feel more confident about it. Um, okay lang naman yun. Walang problema if you want to add an English component to it or maybe because they want a longer co-op. And that's fine. So it's an option for those who have already met the English requirement. So I hope that's uh, clear. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Jenica, for answering Hannah's question. Another question in our, another question in our Q and A chat box. Do I need to take IELTS test before mag enroll sa program? Yes, yes, kailangan po natin because, um, again, yung IELTS part siya ng application, um, application requirement. And you know what? Um, wala naman din mawawala sa atin if you take the IELTS um, kasi makakatulong yun eh sa, sa inyo and also in your visa application. Of course, the visa officer may see it as, okay, you really spent on your investment nag IELTS ka talaga. Nakikita nila yan as um, you're investing into the the application itself, right? And um, you're making that effort and namimit mo yung mga requirements nila. So, um, I would highly recommend na meron kayong English proficiency test na ginagawa for for yourselves, di ba? So, at this, at this point naman, with our program, with the HCA, requirement talaga siya sa application pa lang. You won't, you, you need to complete the IELTS para mabigyan kayo ng letter offer. So that's clear that IELTS is mandatory uh, prior to getting your, uh, sorry, letter offer. Am I right, Ms. Jenica? Yes, that's right. Okay, so this is uh, a follow-up question, um, I believe from the question of Hannah. Um, from Miss Eperlita Galicia. Thank you so much, Miss Eperlita, for asking. Meaning, there will be three months study for IELTS and six months or more for the study, ma'am? No. <laughs> no. Hmm. Malayong malayo po, Madam Eperlita, ang three months and six months. Okay. Um, here's what I'm gonna suggest, okay? Once you have your English uh, proficiency exam results, send it to Roman and Associates. If you have a 6.0 overall score, you meet the basic requirement of 6.0 overall score, 
6.0 din sa reading, uh, not reading, listening and speaking. 5.5 sa reading and writing. That's the minimum requirement. Then you will have the 8.5 months duration of program. You can, you can already go with the direct entry. But if you have 0.5 lower scores, so meaning 5.5 yung overall score natin, um, speaking, listening 5.5, reading, writing 5.0, then you, we will add um, the, the English component to you. So, magiging 1.3 years yung ating duration. Okay? So, wala siyang, walang, um, hindi naman kasi focus din sa IELTS lang yung 3-month English. Yung 3-month English studies ninyo will include, um, of course, the English studies and then it will also have medical terminology review. It will also have preparation for the core program. That, that is why hindi siya purely English studies only. But it gives you 0.5 additional to all of your um, bad scores. Okay. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Janika, for answering one of our attendees' questions. Okay, so wala na ako nakikitang questions. No more questions in our chat boxes, uh, Q&A and our regular chat box. And again, I am reminding everybody to all our attendees for tonight session. Don't forget to send your detailed resume for eligibility check to assessment at romancies.ca. And we will be uh, you know, assessing your eligibility for the healthcare assistant program to Canada. Don't forget to use the subject line assessment for HCA at Stanford College. Then we will be sending you our eligibility check email as soon as we receive your uh, application. Okay, so okay. So from everybody who asked questions, who asked their questions and raised their questions, again, thank you so much for being so participative and showing interest as you know, to spare time attending the session and looking forward to hear from you soon. And let's jumpstart your application by applying for, you know, a uh, healthcare assistant program. And we will be pleased to assist you as in securing your student visa to Canada. And to Ms. Jenica, of course, as usual, thank you so much, Ms. Jenica, for joining us and for your time. And yes, uh, hope we can you. find, you know, convert more clients uh, from these attendees and batch of attendees that we have for tonight. Okay, to everyone, thank you so much and have a good night and happy weekends, guys. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.